They say history repeats itself, and that means housing prices are going to go down, right? Let's take a look at the historical reference points and try to connect the dots. Hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses, and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then let me know because I'm here to help. When you talk about the real estate market, it's not all just about real estate prices or even interest rates. There's more that goes into the equation of the overall health of this market. Things like household income and even inflation. Let's take a look at the situation today, or really as close as we can get to it, and use the 2022 data. Now, the average inflation rate in 2022 was 6.5%, with home prices depreciating by 1.5%. Now, the average household income was $78,813, with the average home purchase price being $348,079. Factor in the average interest rate of 5.34%, we get a house to income ratio of 4.42 and an affordability rate of 26.6%. Real quick, I talked about the affordability rate in a previous video. This is a percentage of the average monthly mortgage amount versus the average monthly take home for a household. So a 26.6% affordability rate means that the monthly mortgage payment takes up 26.6% of the average household income. Now let's start with the elephant in the room. It goes straight back to 2006 for a little comparison. In 2006, the average inflation rate was 3.24% with a home price appreciation of 13.79%. Average household income was $48,200 with the average home price being $221,900. Factoring the average interest rate of 6.41%, you get a house income ratio of 4.6% with the affordability rate being 31.13%. Okay, so inflation is higher today while the interest rates are lower. Home price appreciation is leveled off nationally compared to the nearly 14% in 2006. Now, amazingly, the house to income ratio was actually higher in 2006 with the monthly carrying cost to income being higher as well. To say it another way, when you factor in income as well as interest rates into the equation of the asset price, then houses are more affordable today than they were back in 2006. I continue to have the belief that inflation levels need to be factored into the calculation of future asset prices. It actually amazes me how many experts don't do this. Inflation happens when you have an excess amount of money chasing a limited amount of goods. We have inflation in every other place in the economy. Why wouldn't we see it in housing too? To say it another way, if the value of the dollar is deflating and worth less for every good and service in our economy, then why would it be any different for housing? It's a painfully easy sentiment to get around, but it amazes me how many people struggle with it. It doesn't mean that there can't be depreciation. It just means it's harder. Let's jump to 1976 when the inflation rate was 5.74%. That is pretty similar to what we're seeing today. In 1976, we saw home prices appreciate by 11.14% and the average home price being $43,900. The house income ratio was 3.46 with the affordability rate being 29.72%. It's interesting as those numbers are all pretty similar to what's going on today. And they experienced an 11% home price appreciation in 1976. I think it's safe to say that we won't be seeing 11% appreciation this year, but the economy wasn't great in the 1970s. High inflation, well, it was a way of life. Let's take a quick look at the inflation rate and see what the comparison was with home prices. In 1973, the inflation rate was 6.1% with 19.2% home price appreciation, and then 11% inflation in 74, with 8.8% home price appreciation. In 75, we had 9% inflation and had a 10.3% home price appreciation rate. 1976, we saw the inflation rate dip to 5.7% and had 11% appreciation. Then in 1977, inflation started to tick up a little bit to 6.5% with a 12.3% increase in home prices. In 78, inflation continued to be on the rise to 7.6% where home prices jumped nearly 13%. And in 79, inflation was 11.2% where home prices went up an astounding 16%. So when we had rampant inflation, home prices never went down. Interesting. An interesting note is the economy was in contraction in 1974 as well as 1975 with a negative half percent and negative 0.2 percent GDP decline. Now, I wonder what interest rates were doing during that time period, because there is no way that home prices could go up 10 plus percent with high interest rates, right? Now, 1972 interest rates were 7.38 percent, then they would stick to the 8 percent, 9 percent range from 73 to 78 and would hit an average of 11.2 percent in 1979. Wow, all of a sudden today's rates, they don't look too bad. But housing prices were so much lower then, right? 
So let's take a look at the affordability rate, which factors in housing prices, household income, and interest rates for a fair comparison. In 1972, the affordability rate was 21.2%. It would then start steadily climbing to hit 41% in 1979. In 1973, the affordability rate was 24.9%. It would then jump to 28.3% in 1974 and never looked back with houses getting less and less affordable. As a comparison, in 2022, the affordability rate was 26.6%. So to recap with the historical review here, interest rates were higher and houses were less affordable in the 1970s and housing prices, well, they went up a lot. Anyone else starting to believe that inflation does play a huge role in home price appreciation? We already saw that there were two years of recessionary period in the 1970s and we still had home price growth. Which is confusing because the narrative has always been that recessions in housing going down are correlated with one another, right? In the last five recessions, which includes the recession we saw during COVID, we have seen home prices go down twice. We all know what happened back in 2008, but the other time was in 1991 when housing prices went down by 0.2%. Historically speaking, we can agree that recessions and home price corrections are not necessarily correlated, right? So historically speaking, the last high inflationary time, we saw home prices go up, and that was even in the face of high interest rates. Now, one thing I thought was really interesting was the flow of inflation in the 1970s. I've read a lot about how inflation is very hard to stamp out, and you see it in their data. High inflation of 11% in 1974 and then 9% in 1975. Then it comes a bit to 5.7% in 1976. They only start building in 1977 again to 6.5% to continue to build all the way up until another peak of 13.5% in 1980. I say this to ask, is history going to repeat itself? Is the current calming of inflation just a head fake with additional high levels of inflation on the horizon? If that's the case, then that is a great thing for housing prices and even more amazing thing for those that have locked in their fixed rate mortgage. In 1979, it took $1.74 to equate to the same dollar that was spent in 1972. The cumulative rate of inflation during that time period was 73.7%. That is how much the dollar was devalued in just seven years. If someone bought a house in 1972 and they kept the same mortgage payment, then that means their affordability rate would be 12.5%. And this is because their house payment, it all stayed the same while their income increased by 70%. I think this is a great historical example on how buying a house and locking in your expenses will set you up for a more secure financial future. Wondering what the return comparison for stocks, bonds, and real estate was in 2022? Then be sure to take a look at the video at the end. Now, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I'm your guy. I'd love to chat with you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. If you have any questions, then please feel free to reach out. But you can also reach me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Again, my name is Jeffrey Chubb, and I look forward to hearing from you. So until next time.